before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. It is NAMI of Central Texas. Thank you, NAMI, for making this possible. <clears throat> so I will go through a few of our housekeeping. So this is a safe and supportive environment. Please help us maintain that. Uh, we want to keep respect in an inclusive environment. So we just want to uh, put that out front there. Um, please keep yourself muted at all times and uh, continue to use that chat function. Um, this is, we want to keep things interactive. And so um, I think that just kind of helps help everything go, you know, put that out there. Um, if at any point you're feeling overwhelmed and need to speak with someone, please call 512-472-4357. Press one and then again, press one for immediate emotional support. Between sessions, you can also vis visit our comfort suite, where we'll provide a safe haven. Um, you'll find the comfort suite in the community under the main navigation tab in Hoover. We also have a, a, a number of surveys. So if you've registered for CEUs, you need to check, um, check the chat for links. The links uh, you will sign in for your CEUs. Please sign in at the beginning of this session. After the workshop, there will be another link for CEU evaluations. Please click that link for a short evaluation. Um, it also includes the CEU request form. Once you've completed the evaluation, you will be taken to a page um, with the link so you uh, with the link to your CEU certificate. And the third link in the session evaluation, uh, please take that, the third link in the session evaluation, please take this, this survey and it'll be uh, for a chance to win a $25 gift card. And last but not least, I also have, uh, we also uh, need to let you know that there are a lot of great, um, some great conference merchandise. So you can uh, be sure to check out that at the online store at C-T-A-A-F-S-C dot com backslash shop. All right, so let's get this, this show on the road here. So please join me in welcoming our presenter, Jeanette Hill. Jeanette is a multi-award winning playwright and creative activist whose unique voice and delivery make it difficult, if not impossible, to categorize her and her work. <clears throat> her courage to, um, is bringing awareness to a society often tap on often taboo subjects, especially as they impact the black community. <clears throat> as um, artistic director and founder of J Hill Productions, LLC, her mission is to tell stories about the black experience with a black in with a black voice. Now please enjoy the presentation. We will be back afterwards with some questions and with some Q&As. My name is Jeanette Hill and I'm a producing playwright. And I'm just really honored to be a part of the Central Texas African American Family Support Conference this year. Now they've asked me to come here and talk about art. Now that's not really too well far afield when you think about we're talking about African Americans and we do art well. But this is art in terms of how it can help you focus, how it can help you feel better, how it can give you a sense of accomplishment. And so we know that artists are seldom just artists. We wear a lot of hats. I'm a mother, wife, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother. I'm a sister, I'm an aunt, I'm a friend, I'm a caregiver, I'm a teacher, I, the list goes on, the list goes on. And I'm sure it's fine for you if you were to stop now and take out a piece of paper and just start listing the roles that you play in life, you'll find that you have a long stream of things that you do as well. Now, what we find is that though we wear many hats, we only have one head. 
And so when all of those things start to just come down on top of us, our minds and our bodies react. That's just the way it is. And so we're gonna to talk today about different areas of art and the benefits that they provide for all of us. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying that I am not in any way a medical professional. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a counselor, but I am a woman and I am a human. So there are a lot of things that are gonna be happening with us that I can give you firsthand experience on. So today, the title of the presentation I'm doing is called No Ordinary Days. Now, it's, I named it No Ordinary Days for two reasons. One, that's the name of a play I wrote that we put on about mental illness and a faith crisis an African-American family was going through. Secondly, it sounds good. And when you have to deal with mental illness on any level, we know that there are no ordinary days. And so that was how it is. So we're going to talk about how we might be able to bring art into our daily lives. Now, as I said, I'm a creative activist. Sometimes, I, you know, normally I say artists. Some people say activists. Some people call me a disruptor. We'll talk about that in a second. But mostly, I'm a producer and playwright. But in addition to writing plays and producing and directing, I wear those other hats. You know, I sometimes wish I had a hat for every role that I played because I, I think I look good in hats. So I, you know, I didn't put one on today, but I probably should have. But when you have all of these things that you have to do, and what happens is often, oftentimes, we have to do them at the same time. I don't, I don't get to say, I'm gonna be a wife for the next two hours and not a mother, or I'm gonna be a mother and not a caregiver. I'm gonna be a caregiver, but not a friend. We usually don't have those, those options. Usually when things are happening, they're happening rather quickly and they're happening concurrently. And that is what we have. And again, we simply call that life. And so, what we're going to talk about today, uh, before I get too far, we're going to talk about Disruptor, and then we're going to talk about the not, not No Ordinary Days play. And so as a disruptor, we disrupt those things that are considered normal, considered average, they're considered day-to-day. -day. And because I write about those kinds of things, I write about real life, which means I talk about racism. I talk about Black Lives Matter. I talk about the Me Too movement. I talk about domestic violence. I talk about domestic abuse. I talk about bringing awareness to what can happen before those things actually take place that can help you protect yourself. And yes, I talk about mental illness because that's a significant part of the population overall. And one of the things that we talk about is that being a disruptor is that I disrupt the norm, the average, the day-to-day, -day. I disrupt the polite conversations where they talk about all the nice things and manifolds from heaven and everybody's happy. I write about real life. And I write about real life the way Black people live it. And that's because that's my base of reference. So while my stories are not morbid and they are not hateful, they do address life's issues, the way that they impact Black communities. So that means that there may be something about racism in one of the plays. There could be something about Black Lives Matter, depending on what the play is about. We can also go back to social justice issues. We can talk about domestic abuse, domestic violence. I have an excellent play called Five Women of Color that teaches us how to look for the signs that so that we don't wind up getting in those situations. So I do a lot of awareness work, no ordinary days is an awareness play. So they'll be talking about mental illness in this particular play. And we're talking about other things that impact our community. So that, that's why they sometimes mention that I'm a disruptor because everything isn't 
always rosy, but it's not meant to be. Okay, and we also know when it comes to mental illness, there are so, so many facets of it. It's, I mean, the human brain is just a wonder on its own. It's, it's, wow. So I can't even begin to tell you the kinds of diseases. I don't even know what some of them are, even though, you know, our family's been impacted by some of them. But I can tell you that not being a medical professional, again, we'll make sure you understand that not a doctor, not a therapist, not a nurse, not a counselor. But I do see how some of these things manifest themselves in our families, in our communities, and individually. So that's one of the things I'm talking about when I say that art can make a difference, because there's no way am I negating the value of medical or therapeutic or psychiatric treatment. Please, if you need help, ask for it. There's no shame in not asking, asking for help. There's none. And art can help. There, there are group studies that have been done, multiple studies that talk about the value that art can have in helping people heal physically, but also heal from mental illnesses. It can help them along that road. And there are so many times of kinds of art. There's uh, visual artists, you have painters, you have sculptors, you have photographers, you have uh, textile artists. There are all kinds of, of people that who send you visual art. You also have music. You have people that can sing, people that can play, people who love to listen to people sing and play. I'm one of those. Trust me, you don't want me trying to sing. I can't carry a tune to the bathroom. So, but I love music. I love all kinds of music. And you find that uh, music, uh, I can't think of who it is, but someone says music can soothe the soul and it can. It can. And you also have performance art. You have what I do. You have uh, people who do theater, pe people who uh, dance. You have improv. I, I, I include improv in art because I, it's amazing to me that they can do that off the cuff. But improv artists, you have spoken word, you have comedians. There are all kinds of art, art activities that you can participate in and that they're available to you. Out you could take a course if you wanted to, but so many of them you can do for free. And I'm just, I, after watching YouTube for the past two years, I'm just convinced there's nothing that you know you, that you need to learn how to do that someone has not placed a video on YouTube. Okay. It's out there somewhere. If you can't Google it, if you can't find it in Google, go to YouTube. Somebody somewhere has, has done something with it. Now we're saying when I say you no, know, look at art. You can be, you can take an art class. You can just get a coloring book and some crayons. Now for me, I'm not doing that eight to twelve pack of crayons. I want the sixty four pack because I like color, and I want to do a lot of different things. That's just me. I want to mix the colors up, and so you can do that. So you don't have to be a Romare Bearden. You don't have to be a Picasso. You don't have to be a Monet. That's not what we're asking you to do. Just get you a pencil and some paper or some charcoal and some paper or some paint and some paper or a wall or some wood. Whatever medium you want to try, metal, whatever it is that you think you want to try. And start doing something, create something. When it comes to music, I, I'm not asking you to blow like Patty. I'm not asking you to croon like Luther. Your, your best showers, your best shower voice will work. The voice you use when you're washing dishes, the voice you use when you're working on the car, you know, the way you tap out the drum beat when you're sitting and thinking. That can, all of that counts. All of that counts. And if you can't do it, listen. There is nothing like a few minutes spent Listen to one of your best tunes. You find yourself bobbing with the beat. You'll love it. You'll go back to the time where this happened. And you remember when Sammy did that. You remember that time he fell off the porch. You remember when Nisi came in with the red dress and everybody stopped and started looking at it. It'll bring back pleasant memories. And it doesn't matter what kind of music you listen, whatever you like. Experiment. Just try to listen to something that you haven't heard before. That's great. There's writing. Write. 
that is probably the cheapest thing that you can do out of everything. Get you a pencil or pen and, and paper and start right, write, write, write out some scenes, write a poem. Journal. I'm not a great journal, but you can get you a journal and start writing out things. Now, which which what happened today? What you wish would happen tomorrow. You know, just, just write some thoughts that you've had from back in high school. Thoughts for something that happened on the job. Just start writing. You'd be surprised at what will come out of writing. You know, you have to remember with the singing and the and the music and the painting, no one's going to see this but you for the most part. It's you unless you get in a support group or a group of you get together and you decide we're just going to share it. It's okay. It's okay. Nobody's submitting your name for the Tonys, okay? It's fine. You got theater. I don't want you to, I don't want you to pretend like you're Denzel. I don't want you to become Viola. But you can write you up that same writing I just talked about. Write you out a little scene about something that you find funny or find heartwarming. Get you a friend or two and sit in your living room, get a book of the chicken. If you're a vegan, go get some eggplant or whatever it is, hummus, whatever. And just spend an evening together just reading it. Believe it or not, every play that you've ever seen started as a table read. That's how we start. So you can just do that, call some friends together, sit around the living room, play a little music, then read a little bit, then play some more, snack a little bit. You'd be, you'd be amazed at, at how good you feel just from something that's simple. So there's another avenue that we have. But now, because we understand now, she, she is so cute. That's why I picked this picture because she was so cute. She is just so cute to me. And we would love for all of our days to put that kind of look on our face. The smile, the bright eyes. We would love for every day to be the kind of day where the sun is shining, the bills are paid, the, you don't have to work this day, you found a $50 bill, you're ordering in, you don't have to cook, the dishes are dry, the clothes are washed. Great day. We would all love to have days like that. We would love for every day to be a day like that. But the reality is that they won't be. And you're going to have to have days that you wish you could hide from. The sun isn't going to be shining. The birds aren't going to be singing. The flowers aren't blooming. The music's not playing. And you just want to crawl in a hole and stay there. I trust me. I've had my fetal position days. I have days where I just crawl up in the bed in the fetal position and cover my head. But you can't do that every day. You can do it once in a while, but you can't do that every day. So you have to find ways to deal with things as they come about. And one of the things that we have to know is that the only constant in any of our lives is change. That's the only thing that we're guaranteed in life is that there will be change. Some days it rains, some days it's sunny. Some days the wind blows, some days it's dry. Some days you get up and nothing hurts. Other days you can't get up because everything hurts. Some days you go to work and everything's fine. The next day you go to work, the computers are down, the papers are misfiled. Everything seems to be going wrong. That's life. And so we adapt. That's what we do. We adapt or we get pulled into a hole. And nobody wants to go down a hole. So what we find is that art gives you several things other than just the sense of you get to color and not explain why. Uh, you get to write a story that does not have to have the, the kind of people in it that you normally see. You can write a sci-fi story. You can create an entire fantasy world. Think Harry Potter. You can think out of the box. You can write out of the box. You can write anything you want. You can do cloud writing. Pick a word, put it in a cloud, and then just start drawing arrows 
And any word that you can associate with the cloud, with the word inside that cloud, becomes another avenue that you can pursue in terms of the story. It's an amazing way to get, when people say they have a writer's block, that's a great way to break through that. Unfortunately, I don't have that problem. I have about 100 plays. I, I have too much to write. But there are a number of people that don't have that issue, and they, that helps them to break through that, that, that uh, quagmire. So it's an emotional release. And one of the best things about art, whichever form you choose, whether it's music or dance or painting or writing or acting, it is a very effective and healthy outlet. You let go. You just let go. You dance like there's nobody watching. You scat like you Ella. You play that imaginary guitar like you Jimi Hendrix. You do whatever you want to and you'll find that not only will it release, your focus goes from away from your problems and the issues that have had you bogged down and to, and to creating new thoughts, new goals, new ideas. You know, it, lets you, it reminds you of things that you've already accomplished so that you're not the, you know, when you start thinking those negative thoughts, oh, nice. No, no, I've done this and I've done this and I've done that and I've done that. And you're like, whoa, where's my cape? And so it's an emotional release and it lets you get rid of all of those pent up feelings where you've been angry and hurt. And I, have you ever, I, I've, I've been, I've had days where I had to let loose with a gut wrenching growl because I couldn't think of the words to say. I couldn't find a way to get it out. I just, uh, I just couldn't. It's, it's like you see on the cartoons when they make that, that I always call it the monkey face, where they just screw their face up and make these, incomprehensible sounds and and get you some crayons okay turn on some music and just sit back and inhale exhale now get you some little music if you want if you're in a meditation do a little meditation some of us all music going on you know get your little incense going i don't i don't know what the sage craze is but if that's what you do go ahead knock yourself out you do all of that that gives you like an emotional release that an hour later you, you'll be looking now what was that i have a class that i teach and I always tell them once they get angry like that to go about 30 days out and write on the calendar 30 days from the date that you're so angry and hurt and mad write down that what you're so angry and hurt and mad about and then go ahead and, and you know release you know get go do the music go for a walk exercise do whatever you're going to do and then when you flip your calendar over and you get to that day see if you're as mad and upset about that issue as you were then you won't be in fact you may laugh about it okay maybe not laugh but you know Oh, it's a stress reliever. The same way that when people exercise, and I'm always, I, we won't talk about exercise, that's a presentation for somebody other than me. But when they're exercising and it lets out the, uh, the dopamine, it, it gives you a hormone that, that you get. And when you're dealing with life in all of its components, it can get overwhelming. It really can. You know, we get. You know, the bills are due, baby needs a new pair of shoes, the car's got a flat, you know, mother lost a hat. You just have all these things that have happened. And it just things like with every step you take, somebody is heaping something else on you. And you don't, you can't get up for air. You know, you some days you find yourself short of breath. You see what this guy is doing? Get your little iPod or whatever, put your headphones on. And throw some earth, wind, and fire at somebody on there. You would be surprised at, at, at a couple of what a couple of bars of September will do for you when you're all stressed out. You know, find you something that you like to listen to. Listen to a podcast, an uplifting podcast. You know, listen to something like that. I love Audible. I love Audible. Get you some audio books. You know, listen to the books. If you don't have time to, if you don't want to sit around and read, 
I'm tactile. I like both. I want to hold that book and I also want to listen to the audio. Do that. You know, sit back in a chair, you know, dim the lights and just listen. Let the stress move away. Now, I'm going to tell you, women will tell you that a, a long bowl bath may do the same thing for you. And it, it could, but we can't always jump in the tub and take a long bubble bath. Sometimes we need a more immediate relief. And so that, that can do that with the music and with these other things that are going on. And that's great. The art gives you that, the dancing, the music, the look. If you can't draw, go to a museum. Go to an art exhibit. Carver has a fantastic art exhibit almost every week. Just, you know, go look at it. Mark Nelson has it. You know, Daughtery Arts, they have art exhibits. Check them out. You know, and if you really want to be experimental, drive around town and look at some, they call it graffiti, but it's really art. If you look at it closely, the work that's on these buildings is absolutely amazing. It's amazing. You know, look at some what some of these people are doing. And you just, it takes your breath away. It's just like, wow, I'm still trying to figure out how proportionately, how can you decide what you're going to put on the side of that building and then do it at night when no one's watching. I just, it's amazing. And the other thing is self-discovery. Let me tell you what I found out about me. I always thought I was the wild child, the abstract, you know, I just, you know, let's just try the new things. After the last two years and, and having coloring books and the stamps and everything, I found that I'm, I'm a pretty structured person. I am not that wild child. I am not that free spirit. I, I'm pretty, I, I want to color within the lines. I want to color within the lines. I also learned that I want to learn another language. And I don't want it to be Spanish. Now, the language that I'm thinking of, don't laugh, the two that I've been thinking about are Cantonese and Russian. Do I know anyone that does that? No, oh, I do know one person who speaks Russian, but I, do, I can't tell you why. It's just something that I suddenly found interesting. I found that some of the things that I thought were the most heartbreaking on my life's journey up to this point, they're what made me who I am today. Would I want to go through it again? No, but I do realize now after writing and some, those things are, are help, help to, to funnel me, help me on the journey to be what I am now, to do what I do now. And I think if you look back, you'll see the same thing is probably going to apply to you. Some of the lessons you learned were hard. Yes, they were hard, but they have made you the kind of person that you are today. Art can do that. It makes you think. It makes you focus. Sometimes it makes you rethink things that have happened. And that's okay. That's okay. That's part of self-discovery and self esteem Who does not need more confidence? Self-esteem is, I, I don't know if we can promote it enough. We are beat down on so many sides so often to be able to be confident to have that. Do you, do you know that if you would sit down, I know I keep harping on these coloring books because I just think do not think not because right now, adult coloring, uh, adult coloring books are hot. People are making them like crazy. Adults are just coloring like crazy because again, it's a great stress reliever. You know, it leads to self-discovery. It makes you think about other things. It makes you think about colors you haven't used before. It makes you do all this thinking. And so when you finish that picture, that's a sense of accomplishment. It really is. I've been known to tear a color, a picture out of color book and want to put it up because I thought I did such a great job coloring that picture and not using the typical colors. You know, maybe I made the, the leaves on the tree maroon, orange, and yellow instead of green. It's just what you want to do. And self-esteem helps us in every area of our life. It's just not for the work environment, your career. It helps you in your community. It helps you in your family. It helps you. Can you imagine if we started instilling confidence in our children around the age of three or four? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And so when you start you know, listening to the music and you're drawing and you're going to these museums and you're getting new thoughts, 
you're ne thinking new thoughts, and you're also probably realizing that you have some skills that you didn't really recognize before and that you hadn't utilized before. And that's a good thing. You know, and you you know, go sit down, big on pen and paper. You go sit down after one of those and write down four or five things about yourself that are wonderful. Skip a few lines and then write down four or five things that you've accomplished in the last two or three months. They don't have to be huge. Maybe you cleaned out the pantry. Maybe you, you changed the gears on the car. You know, whatever it was, you did it. You did it. And so, you know, write those things down so that you're, you're proud of what you do. You're proud of yourself and you should be. Because the baseline of all of this is that we have to realize that as individuals, you need to be able to look in the mirror and say, I am enough. You don't need to act like anybody else. You don't need to get any special thing. You are your superpower. You are your superpower. And self-esteem and self-confidence will bring that about. That helps with that. Now, I, I mentioned self-care because self-care is really, it, it really is a component to mental health. It really is. And we talked about listening to your favorite music. You know, you just, you'll find yourself where you thought you were mad. Next thing you know, you know, it's sort of like, mm -hmm. Do that coloring book and dance like nobody's watching. We may be, not be able to do all the moves that the kids do, but you, we've got, you know, we've got those moves that we used to do. You know, go ahead and dance. Go in that living room and move something around and dance like nobody's watching. Do that. Take a walk. Go out and talk to nature. I bet if you go out and you just start walking around your neighborhood, and it could be a neighborhood that you've lived in for 20 years, if you just open your mind to what you're seeing, you'll probably start noticing all kinds of new things that you hadn't noticed before. And not to say that we're in this alone. If you have a support group, if you, I, we all need friends that we can talk to, and more importantly, friends that will listen. That's what we need to be a friend who can listen. Let's sit down and write a friend a letter. I know in this day of texting and FaceTime and all this other stuff, there is something about writing down on a piece of paper what somebody means to you. It will do you a world of good and it will do them a world of good as well. Try it. Try it. I've got all kinds of stationery that I use. Just, just try it. Get you some postcards and just send a postcard to a couple of people, you know, thinking of you. You know, it doesn't have to be a dissertation. It just needs to be heartfelt. And so that's what people are looking for. And so where are we going with this? There are so many places that, um, that have resources for those people that are dealing with mental illness. And like I said, I think all of us are, we just haven't been caught. But there are offered the Central Texas African Disc Conference is one. It's giving you a wealth of information about the situations, people, and places that can help. Awareness is key. Okay. You can't get well from something that you don't know you have. Awareness is key. There's also NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. They, in fact, they supported us when we did our Play No Ordinary Days. They came in with a booth and all kinds of pamphlets, information about the programs, about mental health, uh, about resources that were available to the community. They had lines every, every performance at their table because there were so many people that hadn't had an opportunity to actually admit that there were some issues. Because, you know, we do a lot of shaming. We do body shaming and we do mental illness shame. You know, back in the day, because Uncle Charlie was a little bit off, when company came, you would put Uncle Charlie back in the back room, give him some ice cream and cookies and tell him to watch cartoons until company left. We don't have to do that anymore. Charlie can find a cocktail. The cocktail will be made for Charlie that will have him looking, as, as the old folks say, just like regular folk. He will be acting just like the rest of us. There are things available. There are resources. There are resources available to help families teach that will teach families how to deal with someone in their family who's mentally ill, 
who may have had some challenges. That's what we're looking for. We're looking, we're coming together as a community, as a family, and we and we understand from our culture, we understand from not only nuclear families and extended families, but we also understand the concept that community is family, your neighborhood is family, that family is not limited to DNA. Each one teach one, each one reach one. Help and support other people. And you have NAMI, you have Central Texas. The Travis County Sheriff's Department has an excellent mental health guide. I think it's 100 pages long. You can download it. If you go to the, 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 uh, e, the website is here. But you can download it. It's just got all kinds of information, how you can get help so that the, when someone's having an episode, the police don't have to come and take them out of your home. There are people that can come in and help you get things settled down. There are all kinds of resources in there. I, I beg you to download it and read it. Don't just download it. Download it and look through it. There's something in it that will apply to you, I promise you. And when things get to the point where possibly we may have waited too long or the pressure was too much or too fast or too hard, there's a suicide prevention lifeline number. And it's not just for the person committed. If you're the friend of someone who may be discussing it, you need to call there too. They have people that can help you with that. I, just, as, just to put a pin in this so that you know, talking about killing yourself is never a joke. It is never a joke. Take it seriously. It is better to overreact than to regret. And so I just want to thank uh, the African American Conference for having me here and showing all these wonderful people. And even there's nothing on this page, but it's because I, what I wanted to show everybody is there is no poster child for mental illness. It can be anybody, it can be anything. There's no poster child for it. There's no need for the shaming. And there's no shame in asking for help. So as, as I end this with the research, I just want to thank, thank you again for having me here. I hope maybe something I said has been helpful. But we want you to know that whatever it is, we want you to be whole. I'm going to have a little handout with just some different papers on there to teach you how to plan and goal, have goals and that you are wonderful and you are enough and you are courageous. Uh, just things out there, a little gratitude sheet where you can write some things down that we normally don't think about. We don't wake up thinking about how grateful we are a lot of times. Sometimes if you just slow your roll just enough to write a couple of things down, you'd be amazed at what it will do for your frame of mind. So again, I want to thank you. We're still in a pandemic. Please be careful out there in all areas of your life. And may God bless you. Excellent. Thank, thank you, Jeanette. That was that was awesome. You know, matter of fact, I got my my easel and everything ready. I'm gonna have to do some painting here. So I, I love it. Um, so welcome back, everyone. Let's start our Q and A. Um, we'll do our <clears throat> we'll do our best to answer as many questions as possible. Um, if you'd like to speak, you can raise your hand. Um, in the in the app, and then you can also um, then you'll be muted at that point. Um, please remember to put any questions um, um, for the Q&A. You can also put them in the Q&A part in the app as well. So let me see what we have here. Do we currently have any? I feel like we have one, but I don't see it. Where is it? Oh, can you all hear me? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, okay. I just got somebody said they couldn't. Okay. I'm not seeing any questions on here. Did anybody want to raise their hand and have a question for Jeanette? That may be good. Maybe I answered everything that everybody had. Yeah, it was great. You had a lot in lot in there. Yeah. A lot of good stuff. 
Oh, I think I see somebody waving. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> I, I think, is that it's Janice? Melanie D. Yeah. Oh, hi, doing? Melanie. How are you? Fine. I'm doing great. I can't yes. look, y'all. I've been on this computer two whole days straight. I saw the chat on one of the screens. I don't see the chat or the raise of the hand on this screen. But so therefore, I just had to do it the best way I can. I want you to know, Jeanette, your um, your take on things was refreshing. And sometimes when we are hurt or sad, I, I don't even claim mental illness, but I've just lost my mother. And I'm sad. Or well, I've been through the sadness. I'm, you know, good and bad days. But I want you to know you gave a refreshing take on things. Draw it out. Think it out. Read it out. Do some of the things that you enjoy. And I said, you know, that's good. I don't have to be tied to this. I can take a walk. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I don't have to be so slowed under. She's gone. I need to handle her business, which I have been doing, you know. But sometimes it does get the best of me. Yeah. I went You're through human. the first. Yeah, I'm human. I went through the first Christmas without her, first Thanksgiving without her. And we were fine until we sat down to eat dinner. My daughters ate dinner, and everybody just broke out laughing. And I said, what's so funny? And they said, if Granny was here, she'd say this is the nastiest food she's ever tasted. And we were able to just <laughs> laugh and laugh. And true enough, I, I realized I was just laughing. I said, you're not kidding. Mama would say, oh, I'm hungry and this food's so nasty because my daughters cooked it. And I laughed and laughed until I started crying. Mm -hmm. And um, the happy cries turned into cries of missing my mama, you know. And mm -hmm. I said, y'all forgive me. I thought I was over this. And everybody said, no, none of us are over it, you know. You never get over so it. So it's real. You just adapt. It's real. It's mm -hmm. real. So I want to thank you for just saying, breathe, take your time, do what you have to do to get through whatever phase of mental illness. It, it's real. It's real. Thank you. All right, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And it is good to see you. It's good to see you too. After two years, it's, you know, it just, uh, it's the minute your eyes have to adjust. So. Okay. Would anybody else have had anything, any comments to make? I hope we said something that helped. Okay. I'm waving at yeah. the people I see. I don't. I can't see names, but I'm waving at you anyway. <laughs> yeah, I it's good. We were going to show a clip of, from the play, but I think uh, I don't know if we have time. I, I, I don't have it set up exactly the way I wanted it to right now. But uh, okay, somebody I'm, raised their hand. I see um, that. Can we unmute them? I think you're unmuted. Theophilus? May I have the name of the person? Maybe it can help unmute. The oh, Theophilus? yes. He's the on mute too. My bad. Go ahead. Are you there, Theophilus? He is unmute, uh, unmuted, but I, I'm not able to hear him. Either. Okay. I was, someone unmuted me. I could not unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you uh, for the presentation. It was wonderful. My daughter is an artist. Um, ah. She, uh, you said, can you think, I think that what stood out most to me is you mentioned what would happen if you start building a child's confidence at three years old. Did you say that? Yes, absolutely. Um, thank you. Um, it was com confirmation for me because I, I have been um trying to create an open and safe space for my daughter um she's she's my wife's daughter i married and got a full family <laughs> bonus um, daughter and excuse me it's a bonus daughter that's an extra yes, gift of marriage mm -hmm. <laughs> yes uh and to 
help her um, um, cope with the abandonment issues that she may have uh, that we've never talked about, but that she may have with her biological father. Um, artwork and all of the things that you've mentioned have been a um, a beautiful flowery bridge for us to have <clears throat> um, and build a relationship. So I, I wanted to thank you for um, expressing that because it uh, really confirms uh, the power of art and um, and expression. So yeah, that's continue, what to I to continue to Thank encourage her. Continue to encourage her. Yes, ma'am. Have a great weekend. You too. You too. Excellent. Thank you for that. Just a brief reminder, folks, if you want to ask a question, please make sure you use your virtual hand or let us know in the chat on Whova. Um, we still have a few minutes. Uh, Ms. Hill, if you would like to show something, we would really appreciate it. It sounds very interesting and we would enjoy, um, I think, the, that clip that you wanted to show. So we do have the time. Yeah, I think I'm having trouble getting the clip to come up. I don't know if you have the clip. There. Do you have the clip there, uh, Edwin? I don't, I don't have it. Okay, that's all right. Don't worry okay. about it. Don't worry okay. about it. Anyway, so feel free to uh, unmute yourself and, and ask questions if you have any. Let's see. I, I think they might we have a couple now. Okay. Let's see. All right. Do you find that this support or use of these strategies, persons, academic slash reducing academic performances, stress, for primary, secondary, and post-secondary students. Did you get that? Let me let me read it again. Yeah, yeah I said read it again. I'm not sure okay. I understood it. Do you find that this, this supports or uses these strategies, persons uh, academically slash reducing academically, academics perform? Okay, I'm messing this up here. <laughs> no, may, let, let them say it, and maybe if they add, let them ask it. If they can yeah, ask can the you question. Also, do Do you find that this supports or uses these strategies, persons academically slash reducing academic performance stress for primary, secondary, and post secondary students? Okay, I, if I understand the question, you're asking: Will these types of things help reduce the stress that is? That act that schools that students have academically at all levels at the three at the three tiers. I think that's what's being asked. I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I think I think that you find that art does that. There have been a number of studies that show that art has a very positive impact. In fact, it, in schools that have uh, drama and arts programs, their students are are usually scoring higher on their tests because they are participating in the arts. I think I think being artistic. I think all of us we may not be great painters, singers, or writers, but I think that all all of us intrins intrinsically have some form of artistic ability that helps us helps you as an individual. And again, it doesn't have to be anything that anybody else likes. It has to be released for you. It has to be you expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. That's that's what art is about. It's about you expressing yourself. If other people get on board, that's great. But if they don't, primarily when you're doing your art, you're doing it for you. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I know a lot of kids now like to create music and beats and things like that. You know, that's that's something that the kids are doing these days. Um, I did I, I know? I have a friend who said said if we ever put if we can ever put math and science to a beat, yeah, <laughs> or to a yeah. paintbrush, yeah. we will rule the world. Sure. Yeah, we'll rule the for world for sure. Okay, and this other one, it says, not a question, but more of a statement. The motto I live by is, will this matter in a year? I have encouraged yes. my families to write things out uh, to help families see how far uh, they have come. When they look back on the writing, uh, then they can look back on what they wrote later. Absolutely. So yeah, that's, that's excellent. Yeah, it is. I, because I think because some of it, we get so caught up in our feelings when things are happening until we, we, don't, we don't really, we lose focus and we're, we're so caught up in how we're upset and what has upset us until we don't realize in the whole scheme of things that is your life 
what impact does it really have? What, what, what impact does it really have? You know, next week, are you going to be able to pay the rent? Are you going to be able to buy groceries? Is your car still working? Do you have any aches and pains? It really won't mean that much to you. Yeah. Excellent. How much time do we have, Daniel? Are we, are we okay? We are okay. We have about 10 minutes left. Okay. Okay. Um, so this would be a, a good time to get some questions in. Questions or comments, either one is fine. Absolutely. Let me ask a question. How many artists do we have in the, in the audience today? Do we have anyone that is an artist? I'll, I'll quickly say that I do uh, photography and video production, so I kind of get my little art out. Okay. Through. Yeah, so I, I really enjoy doing that. Okay, so um, Greta James, can we unmute Greta James? Of course. Uh, hi, I just wanted to say that, yeah, I, I, I have been a paid artist at times, and I definitely mm -hmm. understand the uh, therapeutic value of uh, artwork. And in fact, at one point, um, uh, taught uh, children that um, have lost a parent um, sketching skills because uh, so much of, of my childhood was spent and actually all my siblings too just drawing it somehow uh, you know my brother always enjoyed drawing monsters you know I don't know yeah. what that meant for him you know but uh, you know like you know, transformers all kinds of you know fantastical uh, creatures and I just I remember him at one point uh, before I really started drawing just uh him sitting down with me and showing me this neat trick and uh it must it probably runs in the family or something because mm -hmm. you know I picked it up immediately and uh it definitely got me through a lot of my adolescence <laughs> so that's great yeah art is a healer it's, it is definitely a healer sure for sure Anybody else? No need to be shy. Somebody should have told you in the beginning, I'm not shy. I'm not that kind of shy. I'm, I'm an introvert, but I'm not that kind of shy. I have a comment here. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so one person, uh, Nicole says she is a, a painter and a former uh, tattoo artist. That's pretty okay. cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone else, uh, Yannette says, my daughter dances ballet and um, it's helped her so much with her confidence and making new friends. So yeah, does. it actually does. Yeah. It really does. It, it's it's amazing what it can do, and it, again, it doesn't have to be anything huge. Mm -hmm. It's it's just the it's just the feeling of accomplishment, yeah. and that you did it. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, I recently I, my, my son began band this year, so he's uh really enjoying that, and he practices what the school, you know, requires them to do. But then afterwards, he finds a song that he wants to learn how to play. I showed him how to look it up on YouTube, and he yeah. trying to play like different songs. On so That's great, yeah. You know, just taking, yeah, I, I love the way he's taking that initiative. So yeah, it's all type of. It is. I did. I, I even had some coloring page. This is one of the coloring pages I had made. I just didn't get it out there for everybody to download uh, in time, but I had several coloring pages made up so that the people that attended could download them. And next next time, Target or Walmart or anybody has that twenty those crayon that box of crayons for twenty five cents, go buy eight. Because you can just color until your heart's content. You can you can have an adult the, the same way that they have the the wine and painting parties. You can have a, a sip and paint a, and coloring party in your living room, yeah. at your dining room table. Just you know, just get hit, throw the crayons in the middle of the table, sip your drink of choice, play the music that you want to hear, and just start talking, or not. It's not necessary. You'll find that you'll, you'll get so wrapped up in color and you may not want to discuss anything right then. So there, there are a number of ways that you can use art. All right. Are we good, Daniel? Yeah, no, we're very good. I mean, I was just going to chime in. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I hope my, my comments are not out of place here, but I, well, no, I wish right we had more, 
more of this type of connections. I think that personally speaking, it feels like typically we don't tend to associate art with mental illness or other illnesses. And I think it's a shame that, you know, we have lost that connection. I kind of second Edwin here in that um, by no means I'm an accomplished <laughs> photographer. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be here if I were. But um, I know that it's, uh, you know, the time I spend holding that camera and, and uh, taking photos, it really does something to me that is coming uh, and, and typically use it to, to relax, um, you know, after a, a hard weeks of work. Um, and again, I think that we were able to have more of these conversations and make these connections, right? So that people can give things a try. And, and it, it doesn't have to be that you are accomplished or <laughs> you have an actual art or medium, but just trying things, you might find that, you know, some of those, uh, you know, activities can provide some of that tranquility that sometimes we, we need. Yeah, I, 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 excellent, excellent. Now, I remember growing up that my mother, sometimes my mother and other women from the church, they would be, I, some of you may not, not culturally understand this, they'd be cleaning grains or or doing you know, bacon chicken or something. For, and one would just start a hymn and it would just go from person to person. Now, what, would they, were they Mahalia Jackson? No, okay, no, was it Shirley Caesar? No, but those, there was something about the tone of that voice. Yeah. And the way that those women would sing those songs that we would be playing around, but it was just a calming, a very calming sense in the house or in the church, if you're in the church kitchen, it was just calming. From the soul. Yeah, they were because they were just singing their soul and eventually somebody would might drop a tear so you hear a, you know, we, yeah. they were good. Yeah. They were good. And while we may not have understood everything at that young age, we knew that we were safe. We knew that in, in that instance, in that moment, in that place, we knew that we were safe and we were happy. Excellent. All right. Should I, I guess I, th I think we should wrap it up. Am I correct on that, Daniel? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, I really just want to thank, thank you, Janice, for all your, your great insight. I mean, that was excellent. You know, thank you. Gave everybody something to really think about. Um, thank you all for joining us here today. Please take a few minutes and complete the, um, the, the work survey, the workshop survey. Um, if you are seeking the CEUs, please remember that the form will be um, in the survey. And I forgot to put my contact information there. If you want to follow me on social media, it is on Twitter and Instagram. It's Jeanette W. Hill. And on Facebook, it's J.W. Hill Productions. So I, I'd love for you to follow me on YouTube. It's JW Productions. I'm trying to get to 100 on YouTube. I don't, I don't know why I can't get my people to follow me on YouTube, but we keep trying, trying to get to that 100 number right, under JW Hill Productions, LLC. But if you find it, we'll be doing, uh, I know this is a shameless plug, the, the play that we talked about earlier about domestic violence and the mental impact that it can have on you. We're going to be doing a reboot of Five Women of Color in April, which is uh, traditionally date abuse awareness month so we're going to do that and we're next starting next week we're going to be doing a tribute to the faces of black history a number of the people that you maybe didn't know about in our history you know anna Pauli murray per percy julian uh robert abbott that just a number of people that have done significant things that maybe we don't know about so you no know, check out the jw hill productions because we're going to put it out there uh, so that you can see and hear about these people excellent yeah, Thank you all. See, see her page briefly here so that oh, you yeah, can great. catch that. Oh, okay. You can yeah. catch that and, and write it down. This is uh, Miss Hill's Instagram page. Look at all the great content. Thank you. Thank you no so problem. much. No problem. You will find her here. You will, will we find you on Facebook and Twitter as well? Facebook, you'll find me under JW Hill Productions. Excellent. And Twitter, you'll find me under the same thing, Jeanette W. Hill on, on Twitter. Awesome, awesome. Make sure that you, there you go, I leave it there so that you guys can uh, follow. Make sure that you give her a few likes as well. Um, so that we YouTube can- YouTube uh, is, and YouTube is also JW Hill Productions. Awesome. So I didn't want you to do that. So I want everybody to pay attention to the, the sign behind me, even though I didn't get it up for you. Just remember, just breathe. It's going to be okay. Excellent. 
Okay, so everybody stay safe. I'm so glad. I really appreciate you coming out and sticking with us this afternoon. Uh, it was my pleasure to come out. Uh, I think we have someone else's hand up real quick. Um, Greta, I can see part of it. I see Greta James. Um, can you unmute yourself? There we go. Bring about like where these productions take place. Maybe I missed that or. Um, okay, uh, the one, because of the pandemic, what we're doing right now is doing them online. You. I'm sorry. Uh, right now we'll be doing them online. I can't uh, hear you. you can't hear me. Can you? Can anybody else hear me? We can. My apologies. It might be that you're not connected to your uh, computer. Um, okay. So I can hear you. Let, me, let me stop sharing. That help. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So uh, what we'll do is it, they will be we'll be streaming it on JW Hill Productions on Facebook and on the YouTube channel, the JW Hill Productions YouTube channel. Uh, the first one should start Monday at six o'clock uh, Central Standard Time, and then we'll do one the following uh, the following Monday, and it's called the Faces of Black History. And then April we'll be doing Five Women of Color. And we'll we'll start posting about it. we'll post more nice. and more about it. I'm sometimes not that great on getting all the information out, but I'm trying to do better. You guys pray for us, sister. I'm trying to do better to get the information out. <laughs> sure. Okay. Were any other comments or questions? Okay, well, everybody have an absolutely blessed day and enjoy enjoy this beautiful weather we're having. You know, get yeah, out and take great. a deep breath. You know, stand on your porch, go for a walk, go for a drive, have a, have a, and stay safe. Sure. Still in a pandemic. Right. Boil yeah. your water, yeah. but still enjoy life. <laughs> I'm waving at everybody. <laughs> okay, have a good time. Absolutely. And thank, thank you so much for staying with us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you uh, both so much. We're going to wrap it up. You'll have a wonderful uh, day and, and enjoy the rest of the conference. You'll take care. Absolutely. Well, All right. Too. You too. Bye. Thank you.